Welcome back to the Sim Project. It's like the third or fourth time I've shot this video. I'm trying to get it, you know, keep it short because it's just an update and I end up carrying on for like 15 or 20 minutes. Well, I think the last one was 14 minutes and here I go again, I got scrolled. Anyways, um, mid early summer update. Um, it's been a month or so since I did the G1000 video. Um, like I say, we're the end of May here. Tomorrow's 1st June in southeastern Ontario. The nice weather's hitting. Uh, so we're out and about, um, had the motorcycle out, uh, the boat's ready, it's in the water, looking at setting up some travel and stuff. Um, if you're into any of that stuff, please, uh, in the description, or I'll put a link right here if I, it'll let me, check out my other channel, Adventures on Tour. Um, it's not a big channel, it's like pushing 800 subscribers, but uh, I got a lot of cool travel videos there, especially if you do like airplanes. A um, couple, what, a year ago, we were in uh, Washington, D.C., went to the Udvar Hazy Center at Dulles Airport, that's part of the Smithsonian Museums. Um, that's their air and space stuff. Like they got a Concorde, they got uh, the first 707, um, all kinds of stuff. They have the space shuttle Discovery there. And I mean, it's it's not hanging from the ceiling out of the way where you can't get to. It's right there. You can walk up and get within six feet of it. It's on the ground, on its landing gear. It's just an awe-inspiring sight to see. If you've never seen it, I recommend checking it out. Um, like I say, that's on my other channel, Ventures on Tour. There's all kinds of stuff there. There's airplane, airplane reviews. Um, I got lucky enough a couple years ago, I got invited to the media launch party for Air Canada when they first got their first delivery of the Airbus A220. I got a walkthrough of that, part of the private media only event. That was pretty cool. I mean, I'm not part of the media. I just uh, I happen to know an insider. Let's just say that. Anyways, here I go again. I've already carried on for almost two minutes. Um, Sim project update. What are we doing? Well, like I said, I started in the beginning of the video. I'm working on the autopilot again. Love this design. Um, this is the, uh, let me look at that again. What is this? This is the GFC 710, the Garmin. Uh, I haven't cleaned it up yet. You can see some of the strings are still hanging on. Printed this last week, like nine hours to print it. The problem is I paused uh, to do a filament change to print the white. Um, instead of just painting over it with like a white paint marker, the black, I've, I've actually painted, changed the filament and went to white. The problem is when it started, it had an oopsie and smeared there in the corner. So, well, nine hours out the door. Anyways, there's also something else I'm going to change this. I'm going to reach out to the developer. Um, and speaking of the print again, I do have a buddy at work. He's got a bamboo um, with, you know, the multiple filaments. He's offered to reprint that for me in the white and make it look really nice. I think I'm going to have him do it because he can do it about four hours where, you know, it's like nine for me and mine are three. Anyways, like I said, I'm going to reach out to the developer of this because and i don't know how well this is going to show on the computer just film the computer screen so we've got um for your nav controls you got course one for nav one and then it's got a push to basically do like a an auto sync for the direction and then on the other end of it it's got a course two for nav two with the same thing i don't do a whole lot of um ifr flying using both nav one and two like that um, so what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to reach out to the developer and see, or the designer of this, and see if he'll change this course one to make it a course one slash two, and where he's got the push direction, modify that to push like a toggle, the toggle between one and two, um, and then maybe see if down here, if he'll like remove the text for course two, put that as airspeed, and then down here, put this as like a uh, IAS and a mock a toggle when you push the button. The goal with that, of course, is because I, like I've talked about in the other videos, I fly the Honda jet almost exclusively right now. I love that little plane. Um, I don't do a lot of long haul stuff. Uh, I do have like the, this, the PMDG 737. Their 777's coming shortly. I probably won't ever buy that because that's, that's super long haul flight stuff. And that's not what I do. Everything I do is like two hours and less because the idea I like, I like planning. I like flipping the switches. I like taking off and I like landing. And the Honda Jet's perfect for that because it's only got like, uh, I think it's like a 1500 nautical mile range. So that's at most you're talking three hours. Uh, so an hour and a half, two hour flight, perfect plane for doing that. But get away from the autopilot a bit. Let me show you what I have got pretty much uh, ready to start assembling. This is the GA panel I've been working on. So as you can see, I've got a hole cut. That'll be the Garmin radio. The controller is built, G1000, G1500. Another G1000 autopilot up there. Um, I've just cut it at a half inch MDF. As you can see, I bought a, a faux carbon fiber covering from the jungle store. 
and uh, just you can see it's kind of rough cut right here that'll of course this will all pull down nice and neat once I start putting panels in I gotta fix the glue that didn't hold very well right there I just used like a LePage's contact cement I think I got a little heavy down here and it bled through but I've I've cleaned some of it up already and uh, just uh, some soap and water will clean that up and brings it right back up with no issues so the glare shield I've done a video on the glare shield on the first half or the front half of this I've now gone ahead and made the rear eight pieces so it's got the full glare shield look um, some of the spacing is not right you can see that and like the print quality is not the best I did that on purpose strictly for speed uh, normally a print be either at uh, 0.12 or a 0.2 millimeter layer height for this I bumped it up to 0.4 which is about the maximum for the nozzle and stuff I've got for my under three uh, reduce the uh, the wall thickness from four um, layers to two and that's why you can see in spots here you can actually see the uh, infill starting to show through a little bit I did all that to speed print time up because one piece at my regular settings is like 24 hours to print at the reduced settings they were between 9 and 10 so like half the time of the Ender 3 and I had full intentions right from the start of covering this with something and I think uh, and I've got a piece ordered I'm going to try it uh, maybe next week some night after work um, I don't know if you ever see the ads and stuff for the the black faux leather with the sticky backs they see them stretching you your Facebook videos all time for stuff like that especially if you're a motorcyclist like me you see them for repairing motorcycle seats and office chairs they stretch this stuff out stick it down and gives you that faux black leather look to patch a rip or something well I've ordered some of that that's large enough for this so I'm going to try that see if I can put it over make it stick and, and trim it and see how that works fingers crossed it does work because it's sticky and probably once you put it down it's never coming off and there's like eight rolls of uh, filament into this thing to uh, to print it all. So that would be a lot of wasted filament. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to print it all again because like I said, they're 10 hours a piece, 16 parts. That's, you know, 160 hours. That's a lot of print time. But yeah, so going to start putting that together shortly. Um, this we're up over seven minutes now. This is not much of a quick update anymore. Uh, I did build a faux uh, G1000 to go on this side because I'm not going to duplicate the pilot side on the co-pilot uh, what I'm going to do here is I bought I've done this it's a fake looking G1000 there's no text on it I got a second of that the 10.4 inch screen that goes here I bought a second screen it's going to go here and I'm going to put uh, V pilot for VATSIM or little nav map or the Navigraph chart app and stuff on that display off the secondary computer and what that'll let me do that'll let me I got a little 15 inch monitor it hangs off to the side of the primary 43 inch on the secondary with v pilot stuff now that'll put it down there that'll get rid of that monitor that'll give the uh the sim more of a, a real aircraft feel so yeah so the next problem is after that is building um something to hold all this my current stand and everything i've got i've kind of maxed out the heights and dimensions on it and i'll sit back down and get the sun or get the the sun the uh, light from shining off completely off my bald spot but uh, yeah kind of max out everything I've actually had to modify it and raise the seat up because I am six foot four and with the factory design for it your angle for my legs isn't right to work the pedals it'd be great if it was a race car simulator because you're kind of stretched out like you're in a car for an aircraft where you're kind of sitting up more and the pedal angle is different it just wasn't conducive what can I say so Carl over at Heli Mech, he and I'll throw a, a, a screenshot up here his video um, he's built this real nice um, rig for himself at home which is two by fours and MDF and the seat which is very similar to that one he's got it so it slides with a release pin and that allows him to slide it back so he can put his helicopter controls in um, to fly in VR which is something I think I might look at that but that's a whole nother video here down the road um, but he's got um, he's got his GA panel there and I've got the plans for the dimensions of that panel so I'm going to take that and uh, some pictures I'll do some screenshots off his video and see if I can scale it out based on the panel's dimensions to how big this thing is he's built as I've reached out on his discord and and stuff and I doesn't sound like he's going to release plans for that anytime soon he's really working on his uh, 737 single uh, single-sided seat system a lot right now so I, I don't see that coming out so um, if I get successful if I build something nice and it works I will make those plans available free um, through like a uh, Dropbox file or through OneDrive or something and I'll put a link on that on the video should we ever get there um, if you're interested in that that would give you a reason then to subscribe and we'll see how that works 
Um, oh, and thank you very much to my subscribers. The channel broke through 500 uh, subscribers uh, a couple weeks ago. 500 doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, 500 is, however, a point where you can start doing channel memberships and, uh, you know, like for like a couple bucks a month and do some private content for your channel members to support the channels. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you right now, there will never be uh, channel memberships. There won't be Patreon. I do everything this with my own money. I buy my own cameras, you know, I buy YouTube premium so I can have ad free YouTube and, uh, and, and all the YouTube music stuff comes with it. I'm not going to do that to you. My goal is not to do a living off this. This is a hobby. I want to share that hobby with you and I want to share my experience, uh, my mistakes and any ideas and stuff I come up with, or like I said, just the stuff that I found. I didn't know about any of these sites a year ago when I started on this road for this project and it's stuff that I've stumbled across and I want to easily share that with you. So. If that's not a reason enough to just hit that subscribe button, I don't know what is. Uh, smash the thumbs up if you like the video. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down. Leave me a comment. You know, how would, would you like me to see improve these a little bit? And uh, hopefully uh, in a couple weeks, I've got something more on that autopilot. So until then, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.